Hey guys, it's Goosebumps Completionist, and today I have a really random review, but it's for something that's kids horror related, and I'm excited to talk about it. This is actually uh, a review of some comics that came out in 2016. It was released by Marvel Comics under the Disney Kingdoms brand, or line of comics, I should say. And the line of comics took classic attractions from Disney and turned them into miniseries and put them out in that year. And while it didn't last, this one was the one I wanted to read the most. I found this recently at my local library. It was written by... Joshua Williamson in uh, drawn by Jorge Coelho and the graphic novel in question or the series of comics I'm reviewing is The Haunted Mansion. Now I know that this is the second time that The Haunted Mansion got a comic adaptation. There was a volume before this that was done by SLG Comics that I do not own any issues for. Mine is, I think, the preview first appearance of Haunted Mansion in comics, which I'm proud to own. But other than that, I've never really read those. But I was interested in reading this because I heard that this was a mild, kind of soft prequel idea going for the ride itself. That you can take it in that way. Or just a really fun, uh, you know, story associated with the classic Disney ride. If you don't know anything about the Haunted Mansion, you can find the attraction in Disneyland and in Walt Disney World in Florida uh, as well. And these two uh, rides on both sides of the United States have been entertaining thousands of people for decades, if not millions of people uh, annually or, you know, every decade. You know, the it's a timeless ride. It's endlessly rewritable. If you've never ridden the Haunted Mansion... You're missing out. <laughs> it's one of the spookiest things you can ever come across in theme park attractions. And it's, of course, a Disney staple. And I don't think the Haunted Mansion is ever going to go away from either park. Now, because I love the ride so much, I have over the years collected some merch and memorabilia. But I have never really been that big of a fan of the stories associated with the Haunted Mansion. Granted, I haven't read the book series that came out a few years ago through, I think, Disney themselves partnering with a publisher to put out a series of novels. I haven't read any of those. The only thing I've ever read in terms of stories is this, really. And in terms of films, I've seen both of the Haunted Mansion movies from Disney. And the first one, to be honest, <laughs> isn't all that good. And the second one is pretty solid. Uh, but this one has to be my favorite Haunted Mansion story that I've come across, whether we're talking from... The, the ride origin that the, the ride itself provides you down to the movies. Like I said, I haven't read the books. This is easily the favorite for me that I've come across. Now, it does have some issues, but I have to say, this, in my opinion, should have been <laughs> a Haunted Mansion movie. The, the concept of this works well. It has that classic kids horror vibe that I look for in kids horror. It just kind of reminds me of why I love late 90s and early 2000s decoms and it honestly fits into that so if you're a fan of those even try this out uh get this in your collection i guarantee you there's something in this for everyone especially if you're just a casual horror fan or maybe you're like i said a massive disney ride fan or maybe you're just a kids horror fan that's a uh you know familiar with disney's kids horror work go give this a try so that out the way let's talk about the haunted mansion so this is actually a five issue series revolving around a kid, or more so a young teenager, maybe even a preteen. It's kind of vague on his age, uh, but his name is Danny Crow. And the story starts off with kind of like a fun meta idea about the Haunted Mansion. Uh, the comic panels kind of show locals in New Orleans, Louisiana, where the Haunted Mansion is set to, uh, to inhabit. Uh, what their thoughts are on the Haunted Mansion of local fable. And it starts off with these locals kind of saying, you know, what they've heard and whatnot. But then it cuts to Danny. And Danny is this, like I said, preteen, maybe young teenager. And he has this very close relationship with his grandfather, who is this thrill-seeking man. And they like to spend time when they hang out together because Danny's parents are kind of too busy in their work life to spend time with him. He often spends time with his grandfather doing these wanders around New Orleans. 
they always find themselves in front of the haunted mansion and danny's kind of you know reflecting on this mildly in the past tense because as we learn he kind of offers to his granddad you know maybe we can go inside one day and the granddad's like okay when i get back from uh, my next excursion when i go you know hiking this snowy mountain maybe we can try it and maybe you'll be old enough to get gutsy and do it and danny you know he is kind of apprehensive because he is played into his fears of it all well unfortunately uh for danny he never gets that chance to do this with his grandfather because we see on on page events his grandfather dies via a tragic accident while he's you know hiking in this mountain which may or may not be a nod to another disney ride and i don't want to spoil that for you well anyway once his grandfather dies, it's kind of tragic for Danny and the rest of his family. Like, it's specifically his parents who are grieving in their own ways. And Danny, he goes to the nearby cemetery, which is not too far from the Haunted Mansion where his grandfather is buried. And it's almost kind of uh, somber to see him talking with his grandfather and bringing him flowers and just telling him about his day when his grandfather is no longer around. So you get the sense that Danny really misses his grandfather. And one day, he happens to be up by the mansion, you know, talking to himself, or I guess who he thinks to be his grandfather might be in spirit nearby him. He doesn't really know this, but he's just kind of whimsical about it. He gets up near the gate, and what we know as Madame Leota, if you don't know who Madame Leota is, she is a staple of the Haunted Mansion ride. She kind of makes her presence known to Danny at the front gate, asking Danny for his help. Of course, Danny gets freaked out. He runs home in, in, a, in a state of panic. He's then greeted by Leota again inside of his bathroom, asking for their help and that he needs to know that his grandfather's spirit is being held by the ship captain who has placed a curse on the mansion. And they need Danny to come help them break the curse and free his grandfather. And Danny's like, well, if my grandfather needs me, I'm definitely going to show up and do this for him. And because he's so, you know, stuck in his grief, he will do anything to get one last moment with his granddad. So he suits up, he brings some stuff that he thinks he might need, and he heads over to the Haunted Mansion. Now, when he enters the Haunted Mansion, at first he doesn't know what to think of it, but almost immediately he starts to encounter some ghosts. And let's just say um, there are some iconic ghosts that you might see here. Uh, I don't want to spoil exactly who, but if, if you are a fan of the Hatbox Ghost, or if you're a fan of the some of the iconic Graveyard Ghosts, you will see them here. If you're a fan of the uh, Scorned Bride Ghost, Constance, you'll see her here. If you're a fan of the Ship Captain, <laughs> you'll see him here. I mean, there's plenty of iconic ghosts in this story, uh, but there's one that uh, takes privy to him and there might be some ulterior motives going on with these ghosts and uh, pretty early on I don't want to get into too much detail because this will easily spoil the rest of the comic because the comic is rather short but essentially Danny comes to a realization about what May Madame Leota told him and it may or may not be a lie indirectly he interacts with some other iconic ghosts uh, like if you're familiar with the ride there are uh, the ghosts that inhabit the dance hall, or I guess the giant ballroom that has the tables where they all dine. Danny ends up in there, and may or may not be put into some sort of a trance, and it may or may not involve the curse that the ship captain's ghost, who is the main villain behind this book here, has put onto the uh, escape doors within that room that allows all these ghosts that have built up almost to a thousand in total, if Danny would die, that would make a thousand uh, goes to be collected in here within the mansion. And they've been trapped in there for some time. And the only reason is they're too afraid to go up against the ship captain. They don't have a living person to stop said ship captain. And a living person is thought by the ship captain himself to be the only person that can stand up to Constance, who is to him his own <laughs> big bad that he has to deal with in the story and like I said you kind of learn some backstory about Constance and the ship captain and all that and uh you get backstory on those characters and you may or may not see Danny uh kind of coming to grips with the reality of a situation 
what he has to do to save these ghosts, his uh, embittered trust uh, that has been broken with Madame Leota. But it may or may not kind of all come together when he finds out how to maneuver the mansion, possibly to get himself out of the situation with the ship captain through possible threats. And he may or may not uh, find a way out even from Constance, who was probably the baddest ghost in this whole story. Builds up into a climax where the ship captain ultimately makes a threat. We get some origins behind how the ship captain possibly lost something in their body that may pertain to another ghost. And uh, we find out what happens to all the characters. And we get to possibly see what happens with Danny and possibly even his grandfather that was mentioned early in the story. And the story wraps up with an epilogue kind of tying those events together and near the end. And that's essentially what you're going to expect out of the Haunted Mansion comic. Like I said, I'm not going to go into too much specifics with the details of the story because they'll give it away for you. And <laughs> this is very easy to spoil. This is only like a five issue comic series, uh, maybe a hundred pages worth of comic panels if we're talking the amount of pages. But even then, uh, there's not a lot of dialogue and I want you all to enjoy the details for what they are. So with that out the way, let's talk about the Haunted Mansion comic. First and foremost, I think Joshua Williamson's direction that he took with this story, whether it was done with the help of the Imagineers of the ride or through Disney's, you know, big brother, I'm watching you kind of way. Maybe they're trying to keep the likeness of the Haunted Mansion within their own vision. Whoever was behind this, whether Joshua Williamson got his whole vision out there or not, I really appreciated this direction by consolidating the Haunted Mansion idea to the perspective of a kid hero. I think that's ingenious for a kid's horror comic. Uh, you wouldn't expect to get something like this because when you <laughs> go to watch the Haunted Mansion movies, you see stories about adults dealing with their kids. That's kind of what I expected going into this, but seeing that a kid protagonist carries this whole story in that traditional kid's horror way was really nice and the way Danny was written as a main character was super relatable and he was super heroic almost in that Billy Harlan from Welcome to Camp Nightmare way. He has his he has possible character flaws there and some identi identifiable traits and some sympathy but he's forced into a hero role early on in the story and he's given much more of a path to greatness than most other protagonists that you see in kids horror. So I like Danny's character for that reason. I like the backstory about him and his grandfather. It's very touching. It's a solid motive. He's still holding on to the memory of his grandfather. His grandfather might be holding on to Danny, preventing him from crossing over. The Haunted Mansion is the gateway to that. And it's also where they bonded when they they both shared the living realm together. So, I don't know. It, it, it feels like everything done in, in terms of plot with these characters was done on purpose and there's some plot directions in here with the the side ghosts that, that are famous in the ride that I really liked like the ship captain ghost <laughs> in my opinion should have been what the headless ghost from Goosebumps um kind of offered or tried to offer with a ship captain ghost that's what I would have wanted in that book and I feel like I got it here and I'm really happy with that uh <laughs> Uh, the villains in this book were really fun. The side ghost characters were also fun. They all had their own personalities. They all had their own motives with Danny in the mansion, which I thought was intriguing. Danny kind of had like some bosses before he met the final boss, which was nice. Um, there's some creepy stuff involving Constance, who is one of my favorite ghosts mentioned in the ride or associated with the ride. And uh, yeah, you you don't expect that, but there's some surprising, and I say this with quotations, gore for a kid's comic, which I'm pretty sure this was advertised for, uh, in here. And I'm shocked at the level of detail that Jorge uh, Coelho put into the art here. And I want to say this, the art style in this looks great. Hold on, let me pull up a good panel here um, so you get a sense of what you're going to expect. Um... It's really creepy and well done. Here's a good page right here. Just the blues and the greens in this book pop so well. And I love Coelho's style and the color choices here. It really brings out uh, the ride, in my opinion. The ride uses a lot of greens, purples, and blues. And here's another good panel, now that I'm thinking about it. 
of uh, Constance up in the attic holding her axe, trying to behead the main character, Danny. There's a whole subplot involving why he's up in the attic, too, that I don't want to spoil uh, too much. But it may or may not involve a treasure that goes with the um, ship captain's ghost. But even then, I like how all these ghosts are kind of interconnected in some way and related. And their history is kind of a shared history. That's also an other element that I really loved along with the art style. Uh, the, the, the characters, they expressed emotions well. Um, the dialogue was really good. The atmosphere, the haunted mansion inside looked incredible. In some, in some cases, it looked just like the ride. And it felt like the ride as Danny was experiencing the mansion. Like when he first enters... You know, the iconic elevator that takes you in that illusion, Danny experiences that same exact illusion. And it's really fun to watch him experience that in the story. Um, there's a lot of meta nods to it, and it just, it, it hit what it needed to hit for a, a comic trying to adapt a ride and make it its own unique story. I think it did a phenomenal job for what it had, and I really don't have much negatives with it, to be honest. I like the story directions, like I already said, I like where it ended in that Disney kind of way, but it was kind of warranted here because Danny had such a <laughs> heart-wrenching story that I kind of like seeing the cheesy epilogue at the end and you get what you kind of expect from a Disney kids horror story out of it, let's just say. But it, it, it's mostly great, great stuff to be had. But I do have some negatives here with it. Two little things that I just don't like about it. The first thing I don't like about it <laughs> is uh, the pacing in the first two or three issues is kind of wonky. Um, for a comic, you know, I'm not going to be too harsh on a five-issue comic series, but there's a lot of backstory, especially in that issue one, uh, that, you know, sets you up to the events of how uh, Danny ends up in the mansion. And while that's fine, given that backstory that his grandfather helps establish his character... The first issue just kind of barrels through some things within the mansion. And the second issue is no different. As a matter of fact, the second part of the second issue has to kind of slow down the pace. And then it becomes, for like two issues, them just hanging around with these other ghosts. Meandering, not really doing much action-wise. It's trying to set up what's going to happen in issues four and five. And in terms of pacing, um, it's not the greatest thing ever. <laughs> I've read way better five-issue um comic series in terms of pacing out there uh but this one was mostly serviceable and fine uh like i said my, most of my issues come in that later the later portion of issue one and throughout issue two mostly i uh, was not a fan with how hit the ground running it was i kind of wish it spent more time developing certain aspects of the mansion that you know readers can identify with the ride and possibly inserted more of that uh, and been less boring <laughs> <laughs> going off on these side tangents about these characters uh, that are pretty much side characters of the story. So it is what it is, but yeah, um, I kind of wish that um, some stuff was done up a little bit better, especially involving this whole thing with the, the dance ghosts in the ballroom. There's this whole thing and whole motive there. I really does, I don't feel like that needed to be in there. That's my second negative with it. Um, you'll see some ghosts kind of want Danny to become a part of the mansion because they they like them and that part of the story just feels kind of like filler to me especially given the rest of the events of the, the 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 graphic novel as you'll read it doesn't really fit there and it doesn't matter anything by the end <laughs> so yeah those, those are really my only two negatives with it um but like i said i really did enjoy this thing i think this is a great graphic novel so from a zero to five star basis I think I'm willing to give the Haunted Mansion from Disney Kingdoms here maybe like a four and a half out of five stars. Not quite a, like I said, not quite a five star product here. There's some issues, um, some pacing issues and uh, the whole the whole subplot with the side characters wanting to take Danny for themselves really doesn't matter and I don't like it. Um, that might be a subjective thing. You might like that direction. You might not mind the pace. Uh, you might dislike some other things about it, which is fine. But I came out really enjoying this graphic novel. To be honest, like I said early on in the video, this has to be my favorite Haunted Mansion story I've come across, whether we're talking films, writing, or what have you. And I'm glad I, ha uh, I got to read this. If I can ever find this graphic novel in, you know, in, in person for sale, 
not from my local library. I'll definitely be picking this up for my collection. So yeah, that's my thoughts on Disney Kingdom's The Haunted Mansion. Let me know down in the comment section if you've read this before. Do you love this or do you hate this? I'm dying to know. And I'll see you next time.